Welcome to the podcast. I'm excited to have both of y'all here. This is going to be so much fun. Heather, Jamie, welcome. Uh, thank you for being on the show today. Thanks for having us. We are super excited to be here. Um, yeah, and just to talk all numbers. We're numbers people too, so we're all about it. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I am I am equal parts. No, I'm probably more excited than I am worried because uh, I'm like, oh. I'm also a numbers person. So I love looking at numbers and analytics and like seeing that like, oh, I did this one thing in my business. And then now I can see where the numbers either move forward or backwards or whatever. And I can see what happens whenever I do certain things instead of just like throwing stuff out there and being like, I don't know. Uh, I'm just looking at, you know, how many leads come in. That's the only number. Um, but I love numbers and looking at analytics, but I'm also like, I I don't know, like we're talking about numbers and I'm always like worried that y'all are just going to be like, so what is your whatever number? I'm like, Oh, I don't know. I'm sorry. I don't know numbers. Y'all just go on. <laughs> I'm just going to sit back and listen to this podcast. I'm sorry. Uh, but yeah, I'm like equal oh parts. God, very excited. What? What, Jamie? I was like, we like honesty too. We don't cool. just like numbers. We like honesty. <laughs> that is true. Yeah, and it, yeah, and to that point, I think it is very good if you if you are uh, even a self proclaimed numbers person, um, learning something new. It's always good to just be like, I didn't know that I should be looking at that number. I didn't. I didn't know what KPI stood for for the longest time until like maybe two years ago, and then I was like, oh. Okay, cool. Key performance indicator. All right. Now I have some more knowledge. <laughs> so, <Step> forward. <laughs> yes. Um, before we get into a little um, bio about y'all and Conquer Community and all of the fun stuff that y'all do, um, there's something that new that I'm doing on the podcast. Um, actually, the the episode that just came out live this week is the first one that's actually aired with these questions. So I have to pull them up on my phone because I forgot to oh, do man. this ahead of time. Um, these, it's, these are not like gotcha questions or anything. <laughs> uh, these are just some questions to better get to know y'all. I stole a lot of these from Stephen Colbert. Uh, he does this thing called the Colbert Rapport. Um, no, the Colbert questionnaire Colbert rapport was his old show. Um, but he asked questions. So I have 17 different questions. I'm just going to go one, one each. So y'all get to pick a number between one and seven, and then I will ask you that question. Sorry. One and 17. <laughs> oh, good. Okay. Eight is my favorite number. Right. When you were okay. like one and seven, I was like, was like oh, <laughs> but I thought there were 17 of these. Okay. So Heather, I got you for eight. Jamie, what number do you want? Seven. Seven. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it was like my okay. number in all the sports I've ever played my entire life. So I always go for seven. <laughs> nice. Nice. The first first sport I ever played, I was number 40. And I was like, well, this is, I'm not going to have this option very often. Nope. Um, but I love the number four. So I kind of go with that one. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm with you there. Okay. Number eight for Heather. Um, what is your favorite smell? Oh. Okay, this is a weird one. No one judge me. I feel like someone's going to. <laughs> I love the smell of gasoline. I It's probably like I, up there. I knew you were going to say that. When you said no one judge me, I was like, it's going to be gasoline. I, mean, I do not. Like, I want to preface. I don't stand at a gas station and just start yeah. smelling it you're, for long not, periods of time. But just huffing gas over there. Whiff. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there... I'm, I'm with you. I love just that oh. smell. It like, I don't know. It does something to my brain, probably killing brain cells. Oh, bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> whatever, whatever electronic pulses are going on as those are dying. I like that, uh, that smell. So <laughs> I'm with you for, uh, People don't leave for gasoline. This yeah. Interview. Stick around. <laughs> stick around. Even if you don't enjoy smelling gas. Um, <laughs> Okay, and then number seven for you, Jamie, is what is your favorite action movie? Oh, gosh, that's a horrible one. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> uh, oh, I'm telling you what, my brain is like filled with every 
kid movie fr- from the past nine years. Some of those are cool. very action oh, like, based. So yeah, <laughs> we just watched the uh, new Paw Patrol movie last night. So that was oh, that was pretty action packed. Does that, that count as action? Yeah, I think so. Yes. <laughs> uh, no, I okay. No, I I do have some. I'm trying to think of like what we've watched on on date nights that I really love. Um, mm. Anything with Jason Statham is like oh good. Oh uh, yeah, gotta yeah. be there. Um, that and voice. the Born series. <clears throat> oh, the Born series is just it's fantastic. I mean, I I loved Matt Damon before, and then after that whole thing, I was like, you will forever be Jason Bourne. This is this yeah. is it. Uh, yeah. No longer have your born name. <laughs> right. yeah. You are, you are name. no longer Matt Damon. You are no longer whatever his name was. And oh, I was going to say whatever his name was in Good Will Hunting. It was Will Hunting. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I didn't know. That. It, was, <laughs> it was the name of the movie. Uh, but okay, well, cool. Well, I feel like we know y'all a little bit more. We know um, the Born Identity, the Born Supremacy series all of that for Jamie and, um, and just, you know, drive by some gas stations later (laughs) with Heather. And, uh, as listener, as you're going to fill up your car later, (laughs) later today, you're just gonna be like, Oh yeah. Heather said she enjoys the smell. (laughs) They'll never forget me now. Wait, I am. I have a question. Can we like totally turn this and throw it on you and make you do number four? Yeah, Yeah, sure. I, I love it. Um, oh, well, let me pull those back up. Okay. Okay. Number four. Number four is a this or that question. Um, so number four is apples or oranges. Mm. It is a very difficult question for me. I, because I love both of them. Um, <laughs> I think I'm going to have to go with oranges. Um, is it because I love eating both of them? Like, those are pretty much all of my lunches are just eating apples and oranges. Um, and uh, like, like pink lady apples are like oh, yeah. really mm-hmm. nice, crisp. They've got the, the tartness to it, um, but they're not like super tart, like a granny Smith. Um, so I love those. And then like the, the little cutie oranges that don't have any seeds in them. I just go through so many of those. Um, but I, I lean toward oranges because I love orange juice more than I love apple juice. Not a big mm. apple juice fan. And I just fresh squeeze orange juice is delicious. Uh, so it. cool. Thanks for <laughs> thanks for turning that back on me. I, I, always, I always love that kind of, you know, not to where I'm just like the interviewer, but I get to answer some questions and be part of it too. Uh, so sweet. Okay. Well, now that we know y'all, give us a little background about like where you're based, what you do. And um, like, I, I'm interested in uh, like how the Conquer community came together and all that. So y'all just feel free, go, go wherever you want to. <laughs> I love it. Um, so yeah, we are both from Pennsylvania, but about two hours away from each other. Um, we're both photographers in kind of the same niches, but then also different niches. Um, I do weddings and seniors. Jamie literally does everything. <laughs> She's like, weddings, <laughs> brands, families are her probably top three ones, but yes. she dabbles in it all. And it honestly wasn't until we went to a conference across the US that we finally met each other and then kind of got to know each other, became friends, uh, shot together, and then the Conquer community was born and so through it we have 18 years of experience um and we're just super excited that this conquer community was born from all of that and so jamie's gonna give you a little bit about that cool (laughs) heather's like i'm done pass off (laughs) yeah but i finished yep you got my 30 seconds in jamie you take it (laughs) no it has been it has been a ride and something that we have loved being able to pour our hearts into, especially after everything that we have been through within our own businesses. And then now having this unique experience with coming together to build something for other photographers, I think is really special. And I feel like is the motivator behind all of our passion for it. Um, The one of the things that we had seen in the industry as a whole um, with going to different events, there was always this 
kind of uh, celebrity status and barrier between the yeah. actual attendees coming and the educators there. Um, and uh, for good good reason, right? They have worked extremely hard to get to where they are. Um, mm-hmm. But Heather and I's way of the way we would like to learn and the way we have learned the quickest is when those few educators have completely just stripped away that barrier and talk to us like other human beings, like other business owners. Yes. Um, yes. And so we kind of took that little bit and ramped it up and pushed all the boundaries that we could possibly do um, in getting other educators involved in this. Um, and it started out as a simple weekly free coaching call. Um, And to our surprise, we had tons of educators who felt the exact same way that we did. Um, We even heard comments that they did not like having attendees standing in line just to take a photo with them. They wanted to be able to talk to people. They care about the future of their businesses and the way that these events were set up. It just didn't allow for that. Um, And so through that, uh, the Conquer community and our in-person event, Conquer Live, uh, was born um, just to help other photographers build sustainable businesses together. Yes, I love that. I love because I, I have also felt that going to going to different conferences where I'm like, you know, there was even like a, like a VIP or backstage like upsell ticket price. Like if you want to be able to talk to these people, the speakers, the keynotes and all that, then you pay this extra price. Then you can go into the green room and you can like talk to them. Like that's just, it's a lot. And it did feel like um, there was like a huge separation between the, the speakers and the, uh, the audience. And I love the, the community aspect that y'all have where it is very much like, we're all going to be like eating at the same table together. We're going to be sitting around uh, the campfire at night and talking. And like, there is no private speaker dinner where everyone goes off and you don't see them until the next morning, but everyone's just hanging out and everyone's all together. And like, it really does have that community aspect to it uh, that, is I think so important. I mean, I, I love community. I'm a huge advocate for community and um, just you, you grow so much better whenever you can sit next to someone instead of just like, there's, there's so many conferences or, or places that I've gone to where I'm just, you know, taking notes in my journal and then I get home and then I just put that journal on the shelf and then there's, there's nothing going on after that. But whenever you're having those conversations with people, it's like, Oh, no, I feel this now. Like I, I feel what you are speaking on stage because you, like, literally spoke it into me at dinner. You know, roasting marshmallows because uh, we have marshmallows for dinner, obviously. Uh, <laughs> uh, but like that, that community, I love it. I love what y'all are doing uh, and and everything that I've I've seen with uh, Conquer Community. So that's that's amazing. Thank you. Yeah. All right. So, okay. Kind of like pivoting into numbers. Um, cause I'm excited about this too, as, as, as not as excited as I am about community. Cause I am very passionate about that, <laughs> but I'm also passionate about numbers and knowing your numbers. And, you know, if you don't know your numbers, it is definitely costing you somewhere. So can y'all give us a little, a little background or not background, but like a little uh, insight of like what numbers we should even be talking about. Cause you know, some people might be like, all right, numbers. Cool. I have this many Instagram followers and like, I know these numbers, what numbers should we be looking at in our business? Yeah. Uh, Heather and I, I think have two probably different answers for this. Um, and Although there are a lot of numbers that drive your business, um, these are kind of the ones that we have seen make a bigger impact in um, the growth and and decision-making process um, in ours. But I am going to go with your profits. And when I say profits, this is not just as your business as a whole, but this is from each individual revenue stream. So even if you are a photographer, um, if you are a photographer that does weddings and seniors or weddings and families, 
each of those niches that you serve need to be treated as a separate revenue stream so that you can truly see what is helping your business, what, you know, what um, clients are coming to you for. Um, this helps you have a clear growth potential analysis of your business because you're making all of these decisions off of data. Um, so when we hear a lot, uh, photographers speaking to the fact of like, they don't know the direction that they should go. Um, you know, they they don't know how to pull this out of their clients. And if they're not telling you directly, they certainly are going to tell you with your, their wallet. And you can yeah. then look at those numbers um, and you will see where your time is the most valuable. And this has a tremendous like domino effect to the big dreams later on. Um, for me, it showcased where I could truly connect with potential and current clients. Um, so I used to do a ton of newborn sessions and that was mainly just spun off of weddings and everyone was having babies. Right. Um, yeah. Like, hey, Jamie, you took our wedding photos. Now we're bringing this life into the world. Can you take their photo too? Yeah. (laughs) And I do love and adore them, but it quickly showed me because I, back in the day, I did two very different types of newborn, like the super posy took you two hours to get one pose or lifestyle and knowing what those numbers are helped, helped shape the way that my business went. And then, you know, going a step further, it shows you ways to connect with your audience because then you see the things that they are posting or that they like, things that come up in conversation in your consults. Um, Mm. And then that big dream impact of knowing what your profit is from your revenue streams is you have the ability to dream for your business impact in the community. So you may find that through a session or through a connection that you have of those potential clients or current clients um, really strikes a chord with you. And that's the direction. That's the reason that you have this business. It may be something that's not even in your head anymore, but you'll never get to find that if you don't have a clear path in your decision-making within your business, because it will fizzle out. Yeah. Yeah. No, I love that you brought this up first because this was like, I remember, so whenever I started my photography business, it was during my lunch break. Uh, I came up with the idea of like the the name and everything and wrote it down on a like Subway sandwich napkin and brought it home to my wife who we like just got married three months before. And I was like, what do you think if I start this business? Here's my numbers. And here's like my, my zero date of when, you know, all of the initial, um, investment will be paid off by this profit and you know i'll we'll be we'll be making profit by you know four months from now if i can book this many and and all of that and like i loved the the profit but then it got lost later on because well really i started the business as a like photo booth business because i saw people doing photo booths and i was like i can easily do that and like I am much more energetic than these people are just like, I don't know, just grab a prop and go whatever. (laughs) And I was like, no, I'm going to be wearing props and be like, here, you want to like grab a sword and we'll fight and I'll, you know, Uh, but, uh, and it was fun. I still do those every now and then, but like once I got into photographing weddings, I didn't have that same structure of knowing what my profit margin was. And I was just like, this is, probably good enough this is you know i was charging like 500 dollars for uh, an eight hour wedding because i was like that's a good you know math is difficult sometimes but that's like you know a, a good amount of money per hour uh when i was making nine dollars an hour at my you know nine to five job and and but then like knowing i didn't know all of the business expenses and the cost of doing business so then Once I started looking at that, I was like, oh, I'm making like 50 bucks a wedding. Like I'm not making all that much once everything is said and done. Uh, So yeah, Jamie, I love that you brought that up first because like that was something that I, I was very intentional with when I started doing photo booths. But once I merged into photographing full wedding days, I did not structure my prices based on what the cost was. Uh, it was just what I felt 
what I felt that I was either worth. Well, no, that is what it was because I had a very low self worth back then, uh, and I was just like, "Yeah, no one's going to pay more than five hundred bucks for a wedding photographer. That's insane." Uh, but yeah, no, I love that you brought that up first. <laughs> And eight hours isn't eight hours, right? Like there is exactly. a lot more. Exactly. Yeah. I also had like an Excel spreadsheet that I would uh, log my hours because I had to do that for my nine to five job. So I just brought that into the business. And I remember after probably like the, f- maybe the fifth or sixth wedding, I actually went through and calculated up everything. And I was making like six and a quarter dollars an hour based on oh. all of the hours that it took. Cause I was, I didn't have any of the fun, you know, uh, photo mechanic calling systems or any of the like imagine AI for editing and, and all of that. It was just me and a very old laptop uh, slowly going through photos. So yeah, it's, it, it's, it's, that's a good point of, yeah, the, the hours that you're actually there behind the camera are not nearly the hours that the whole job takes Mm -hmm. and that just adds to your cost of doing business too. So, yeah. Yeah. So Uh, yeah. Well, Ooh, go ahead. No, go, go ahead, Heather. Yeah. I was just gonna say you guys like teed up perfectly for what my numbers were (laughs) that I like first thought of mine is like all the expenses side. Like that is where I instantly go and someone's like, what numbers should I know about my business? And Mm -hmm. it's not, just the expenses per wedding or session that you have, like renting a studio or purchasing gear if you need to rent it. But it's also the yearly expenses, like those subscriptions you have to pay for to keep your business going or the um, independent contractors, if you do any outsourcing for editing or managing your social media, like those expenses are so important to know so that you know how much you are making and the profit that you're getting that Jamie talked about. And so being able to track that, know where it's all going, know how often you pay it and how much you pay is game changer for your business. Oh yeah. Yeah. And that even comes with like, whenever you're scaling your business too, um, cause I ran into that whenever I started bringing on associates and I was like, Oh, mm-hmm. if I want to, cause I don't want to like, you know, be like, I'll pay you $200 to shoot this wedding and I'll do the editing. I was like, I want to pay them like a good wage. So I had that baseline and then built everything around it. And I was like, yeah, this is actually not a less expensive <laughs> version than, uh, than me, which means that I should probably be paying myself more, um, as well. <laughs> but like that, that was something that I started, um, uh, uh, pretty much just not looking at the numbers, which was hurting me because I was just like, okay, I'm charging X amount. I will charge a little bit less than X amount for an associate. And then once all of the costs of doing all the business and then paying an associate and paying uh, for editing and all of that, it was, you know, I, that, that profit margin was, was zero or sometimes even less than zero where I was like, I am paying to have this other person (laughs) photograph this wedding this is not working for me Uh, so yeah you definitely need to know where your money is going um, for the like the fixed costs and then also all the variable costs that are you know different for all the different photo shoots and sessions and you know just month to month so okay I love it. We're like, we're diving in deep right here. We got profit and we got cost of doing business. What other numbers should we be like keeping track of as we're going or ones that maybe are like a little bit more hidden that we may not really think about to follow? I think another one that's really important and I think we kind of touched on it, but like, um, Tracking your inquiries that you're getting in for those different sessions are super important and also like when it comes in. So throughout Mm. the year, tracking those inquiries um, month by month to know like when is your high points? Maybe it is during engagement season that people talk about that like November to February time, but it could also be like springtime that you get a ton of um, 
inquiries or if you're a senior photographer maybe it's during that summertime chunk while people are like tan and they're getting ready to the go back to school and they want those right. good photos during that time and i think knowing those numbers are super important so that as you figure out your business and the year and how it looks you can plan out like when you need to market for things more than others when you're on your off season and you can work on the back end of your business and just knowing that fluctuation is super important important throughout the year oh yeah yeah like knowing those those high points and the low points helps you plan to where you're not just like oh i am in a lull right now i'm not getting those leads coming in i need to start doing something because mm -hmm. it's already too late you know you're i mean you're you're gonna it's gonna be helpful but it's not gonna be as helpful as it would have if you had looked and said okay normally in like may through july it's a pretty slow time for new inquiries so yeah i need to do some more marketing some more advertising some you know run some ads and stuff on the front mm -hmm. end of that to help keep that up um and yeah because once once you're in a lull it's like well now i don't have the money to pay for the ads and like how am i yep. going to do this and you know i don't have the time because of all these other things so yeah mm -hmm. keeping keeping track of of all of that, which most CRMs allow you to do that. I love running those reports and just seeing <laughs> like all the graphs of like, all right, these are the leads and these are the ones that booked and like which ones yeah. and you know, what's my percentage and is my percentage too high? You know, am I booking too many people? Because mm -hmm. if you're booking too many people, that means that, you know, your prices are very low or that yep. they at least have a very high value on what you're doing. So you, can also raise up your prices and not book so many. Um, yeah. And if you're booking, you know, not enough, if you're like, I'm only booking like 5% of the people that come through, then, and if you need more than that, then, you know, restructure your prices or something or figure mm -hmm. out uh, where that, it allows you to like see the, the weak points of, your business and your structure of what you're doing. Cause maybe it's not pricing. Maybe that's right mm -hmm. where it needs to be. It could just be that you don't follow up on emails and your, your one reply to their inquiry got lost in the 10,000 unread emails that they have. And, you know, I am definitely one of those people that just like my personal email is just my wife hates oh. that little bubble next to us like 14,000 unread I'm like eh, it's just a bunch of stuff like you know old navy and you know uh, William Sonoma <laughs> yeah. and places that I gave them my email address and I just haven't unsubscribed yet because I'm like one of these days there's going to be yeah. a sale that's coming through I'm like oh yeah I need that <laughs> and then I'll actually yeah. open their email but yeah, it, it's so easy to get lost in people's inboxes. So that could be could be a weak spot where you're losing those people and you wouldn't know that if you weren't paying attention to your numbers. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I'm I have a one that I think a lot of people don't don't pay attention to until okay. they are it, it's almost too late. Um, and it's kind of from a different perspective of what Heather just talked about. But I think when people, especially when they're going in and building their businesses, right, the whole the whole thing is like, will people actually pay me for the thing that I'm passionate about that I want to do? And so they're kind of in this like, yes, 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 yes mentality. Um, but the numbers, and I, I bring this up because over the past nine years, we have had three children. And in each phase of their life, um, for the way that we have wanted to set up our family, dictates what my actual capacity is. And I think that's one set of numbers that people don't look at until they're they're in a position where they think, oh shoot, I, I actually don't have enough time to do yeah. this. And so writing out what your capacity is, if that's 16 hours a week, if it's 20, if it's 40, you have to kind of have an idea of what your capacity is and what is beneficial to you and your life so that then you create and craft a business that feeds your life in that manner that you can yes. take on you know what we just talked about if it i think your example was five like if five percent of those leads you're booking you know if you need more than that 
well, how do you know if you need more than that? How do you know if you're actually able to serve them well if you don't know what your capacity is? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I am I am there with you, Jamie. Over the last uh, nine years, we've had three kids. And there are different seasons of those nine years where, like, newborn season was definitely difficult because, you know, we were just walking zombies, you know, holding a tiny little baby. Um, but also, like, a little bit after newborn was a little easier. I had more time to edit because I could just, like, sit there and hold them as I was editing with the other hand. And, like, they were just still. But then the, uh, the like, the year and a half to three-year range is why do you keep unplugging my computer? I am here and, like... I, my our third our third child she just wants to click any button that has lights and she will just turn off my computer in the middle of things and it has been uh been difficult which is now why i have a a separate room for (laughs) my office and i'm not like because we did like a an office slash playroom for a bit so that Mm. i could have them in there and they'd have all their toys and i can i can edit i can you know do what i need to do answer some emails and then i can also just like jump on the floor and play with them um but yeah knowing your capacity and and all of that because having a separate space that also lowers my capacity of being able to work because I can't be, you know, co-workers with the children anymore. I have to have a separate workplace. So that lowers my availability time and capacity Mm -hmm. to actually work. Uh, So yeah, it is, uh, especially for, for parents, we are just like a constant roller coaster of just like, all right, we have so much capacity. Like right now, uh, all of our kids are in like daycare or uh, school. So this is like the highest capacity that I've had in the last nine years. Because uh, five days a week, I have five hours a day to record podcasts and edit and to like revive my blog that has been limping along for the past five years we're like (laughs) all right once a quarter i'm throwing something out there i'm like yeah i'm gonna get back to my every other week that i used to do back in the day Uh, but yeah no i think that's a great a great number to to see that like because yeah that's not even a number that i uh jamie as we were like as i was thinking of like what numbers y'all might throw out there for uh for us to talk about i was like yeah i wasn't thinking of number of hours on the calendar uh, but that is a huge one because you can uh, take in too much um you know, in 2021, I took in too much. We had a one-year-old and I shot 42 weddings and that was so much. And I did not have an editor at that point. And I was doing all of that on my own and I had not grown a, a team. So I was also answering all of those emails and figuring out all those timelines and uh yeah and i had very little actual time to work so um yeah if i had been able to assess what my capacity was and figure out those numbers i would have been like i can't take this many weddings so i i need to need to close the books at this point or figure out something else to help me have more capacity instead of just getting to the point where I was drowning and also like, yeah, bring it in. I'll book that one. Send me that retainer. I'm good. No, I I'm a good swimmer. I can, I can keep this up. Don't worry. (laughs) And isn't that crazy though? I feel like that's such a good point because some, some people listening might be like, Oh, well that's a really good problem to have, but there's always, it's the balance of both. So whether you're on one end where you can't, you're not, it don't seem to be making any traction or you're drowning. Neither situation is going to be good or sustainable for you. No, no. And you want to find that balance of like a good stride where you're just, you're running or, you know, I guess swimming if we're, you know, drowning at some point, maybe you're on a triathlon, who knows? Um, But you're, you're like, you're moving forward at the pace that you want to, to where you can also like, have that family time because when I was shooting 42 weddings, I didn't have a lot of family time. And that was really rough too, because we had two older kids and a one-year-old and a lot of that uh, like family 
kind of stuff fell on my wife who was doing a lot of that. And I was, uh, most of my work life balance was leaning to work. Um, and now it is a lot more centered, which I love. And I feel so much more like, um, full now, even though I'm not shooting, I, I, I think I have 20, 20 something weddings for this year. So it's like, it's not terrible. Uh, it, it's, it's definitely not terrible, but it's, it's not like overwhelming to where I feel like I'm drowning. It's like a good steady pace and I'm still able to like sit and watch the Paw Patrol movie last night and uh, take them to go uh, bowling because they got some special award at school and, and that kind of stuff that I wouldn't have been able to do if I had just been, you know, not looking at that work-life balance in, you know, my capacity and all of that. So uh, I love that. Okay. What, I mean, we've, we've kind of like, I was, I was going to ask about like, how can we see how this can move your business forward? But we've kind of like talked about that with each of these, with each of these numbers, how like whenever you do have that grasp on what your numbers are, whether it is your profits or your cost of doing business or you know whatever it is, you're able to um, kind of move your business in uh, a certain way to where if you don't have a grasp on your profits, you're just kind of flailing and you're, you know, maybe you'll have a good month where you have a lot of retainers come in. And then maybe once you like shoot those weddings or photo shoots or whatever it is, you're, you're not getting as much profit on the back end because by that point, all the other expenses have come out and you're like, Oh, I only have $112 left uh, from this. Or like, you know, even looking at your bank account where it's like you, you don't allocate um, the money that's in there. And you're just like, I have so many thousands of dollars in the bank account right now for the business. I can go buy this new camera system or I can go do this and not knowing like, oh, actually this portion is allocated for taxes. Mm -hmm. This portion is allocated for like paying your contract laborers. And this one is allocated for paying yourself later. Uh, Cause you know, there, there was one time that I really wanted a new camera system and I was like, I have the money, but thankfully I sat down and looked at what needed to be paid over the next few months. And I was like, Oh yeah, no, I don't, I don't have enough extra. Uh, to do that. So I love all of these numbers. Do y'all have any like last little tips or anything or any, uh, anything that y'all have seen in your own businesses or in those that y'all uh, coach and mentor and, and talk to? Heather, do you want to do like, t- like some tangible ways that people can actually put these in? Like we've given the yeah. idea and what they are, but yeah. to really like make it happen. Yep. Uh, I thought of one. Uh based off what we chatted about. Um, I think a really good thing to start with when that money comes in is to make separate accounts or different buckets within your banking system where you can instantly put that money for taxes. Like that Mm -hmm. could be between 20 to 30% of that income and what that is. Take out 20, 30% right away that will be your tax bucket. And then take another percentage out for your equipment or needing to pay someone. So that could be another 30% where you're instantly taking it out. You're not going to use that money. And it doesn't like almost challenge you to be like, well, I could use it. Like, no, get it out of your sight. Don't think about it. Do not even touch it, move it to somewhere else. And then the last bucket that you could do is savings. And so putting some aside to that, where that could be like 8% to 13% is a common um, percentage that people do and set that aside, either create like a 401k or somewhere to put it, or even just make an account put it to the side and then figure out how you're going to use it and where you're going to put it later on. But doing that right away doesn't even let you touch that money. So then you know what is the money you can use for personal stuff or trips or however you want to use that uh, additional money. Yes. I love that. 
Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> End of the year. I was like, all right, cool. Let me empty this one. <laughs> a empty fun this fact bucket. <laughs> about uh, bonuses is if you put more in your taxes one than you need to, like if you uh, only really need 20%, but you always put away 25%, the end of the year, once you finish paying taxes, which so many people do not love that time of year, and you have money left in that bucket, then you can use that as a bonus and like go on a trip or do something fun. Or even if it's just go get ice cream because you had $50 extra, like go celebrate that you finished tax season. Yes. Yes. I that love is... how excited you get. Oh my God, I love tax season. <laughs> She's like, uh, let me tell you about it. Yes. Put the money aside. <laughs> and and I love that. I love the the like putting aside a little bit extra. Um, cause that is something that I've done because you know, uh pretty much from day one becoming an entrepreneur, um, I never got any uh tax returns back. When I worked at a, a corporate nine to five, I would get tax returns at the end because it was just like a simple W-2, here you go, you know, mm-hmm. 1040 easy for him. I didn't have to think about anything. There were no deductions at all. And then now I'm like, oh, there's all, of, there, there is not a year since I started the business that I got a return because, you know, the, it's, it's just not set up that way. And, mm-hmm. uh, and that was a way that I was like, I know that I'm probably going to be after like, figuring out like deductions and what I can write off for, you know, going to conferences, educational stuff, you know, buying new equipment and, and that kind of depreciating value and all that, that you can write off. I knew that I'd probably be in like the 15 to 20% range, but I wanted to put in that full like 25 to 30. So then afterwards I had plenty to pay the taxes and then I had extra. And then once I had like team members, I would just, take out everyone and just be like, all right, I have like, you know, if it was like $800 extra or something that I got back for a, uh, a, a tax refund, I would take half of that and then just go take everyone to like, we did top golf one year where we just like rented a couple bays for a couple hours. And I was like, anything you want to eat or drink within reason, <laughs> don't just order $500 worth of food, please. But like, you know, you, you, you order your normal stuff. And then like, we just played and hung out and I invited a couple of like my, my, my favorite, uh, like my favorite is probably not the right word, but like they were definitely my target couples where I was like, if I have 10 more of y'all, this would be amazing. And I just invited them and like, we all hung out and did that. And Sadly, I haven't done that since, you know, the pandemic in 2020 and all of that, but um, have plans for this upcoming tax season. Uh, so, yeah, I love that that you were you mentioned that, Heather, because that is something that I have found very useful, very beneficial in my business, where one, I'm not worried about taxes once that comes around, because mm-hmm. it's in a separate account. It's not something that my normal, you know, uh, software uh, payments and you know the yep. uh, contract labor and all that comes out of my checking account that is a separate savings account um, and side note on that if you have a savings account that you are definitely not touching um, and except for like once a year open up a high yield savings account because it is like zero money to do that that you don't have to pay to open those and instead of getting point zero five percent interest it is like upwards of you know two to four percent so then if you have thousands of dollars in there it's just growing as Mm -hmm. it's sitting and then it's even bigger bonus at the end of the year so yeah that is as something that i found out recently in like the last couple years so i've been just any chance that i get probably the listeners are like okay we get it john high yield savings account that's fine (laughs) i'll go do it uh, but no, I love it. It's it's so good. Hey, if you got one person to change it. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> even even if you just have like two hundred dollars in there, still it's it's growing a few dollars. Mm-hmm. So okay. Awesome. I love it. Um, this has been so good. I have really enjoyed this. I knew that I would because it's numbers and it's y'all. So I was like, <laughs> this is gonna be this is gonna be fun. Um, but before we wrap up, is um uh, there's a part of the show that I like to do where we talk about what we're loving this week. Um, 
and it can be literally anything like uh, you know a new movie um food anything um that y'all are just loving so take it away uh either of you whoever wants to go first um what are y'all loving this week Heather's Go loving the smell of gas. <laughs> <laughs> my gas, mine's finished. Just, it's my favorite just, thing. Just hanging out at the gas station. Oh it's my cool. gosh. I am known for one thing, and I hope gas does not take over <laughs> for that one thing. Like, please, everyone, don't hold oh, yeah. me. To oh that. no, your next brand session, you're just going <laughs> to be out like, like a vintage gas station. Just like. <laughs> Oh, no, we know. <laughs> I hope your DMs fill up with like photos of gas stations. <laughs> Maybe yes. so many people will agree with me, and I just needed to be the person to say it out loud to everyone. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Anyone listening right now, if you're driving, next time you stop and fill up the car, just take a selfie oh, and then and DM tag me. Heather. Yes. Oh, I would love it. <laughs> at Heather.Marie.Lacy or at the Cocker Community. I mean, <laughs> there we go. I'm not taking it. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie might not want that. Maybe not the conquer. <laughs> okay, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're like, I don't want all these gas photos. It's cool. Yeah. <laughs> I'll just do it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so other than the smell of gas, what are y'all loving this week? <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go first just so I can like okay. freshen my brain off of gas. <laughs> freshen everyone else's brain off of gas. Yeah. Um so the thing that I am actually quite known for is my love of ice cream. Like hands down. I could eat it every day, breakfast, lunch, dinner. I can never go wrong. That you are never fool enough to not eat ice cream. Yes. Our family always says, like, it fills in the cracks. And so my couples know this. And one of my couples actually got me an ice cream maker um, as, like, a birthday gift um, one of the years. And uh, this is so bad. I think we got it last year. And I only used it this weekend, finally. Um, But we made our own ice cream. We did peanut butter and chocolate chips. And Mm. I am, like, obsessed with it. It was so easy. It only took took I mean you had to like chill the ice cream mixture but then it only took 30 minutes for it to freeze and harden and wow. we made our own ice cream and now we have like a week's worth I mean I eat ice cream a lot so other people it could be like two weeks worth for me it's like a week it's, worth it's two <laughs> gallons of ice cream but yeah, don't judge I eat a lot of ice cream but it's so good <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, we had one of those like old school ones that you like had to crank. Yep. And My that took hours and hours. I remember doing that as a kid. And like that ice cream was the best tasting ice cream because it took <gasps> so long to make and it took so much forearm strength to just turn that that ice cream. So, you know, I love that. Have like a little <laughs> quick, quick, quick question for you, Heather. Have you ever had right. milk bar ice cream? No, what is that? Okay, so milk is bar is um, it's a it's a a, a shop. Um, oh. I think it started in uh, New York, and now she's got like little milk bar places all over the place, and oh. it is a uh, cereal milk ice cream. So that's like what she got known for was making things with cereal milk. And she made like a cereal milk pie and everyone just loved it, called it crack pie. She has now rebranded that. So it's not crack pie, but I still, I went into, uh, there was one in Vegas and we went there for our anniversary and I was like, Oh, can I get a piece of crack pie? And he was like, um, what, what do you mean? And I was like, Oh no, sorry. It's, it's not called that anymore. Okay. Um, but it's, it's so good. It's like got this like, richness to the the milk uh, that's just it's amazing so they they sell it in different places um i think they have it at target now um but it's like a little a little pink uh pint and it just says milk on the side of it so it's milk bar um i'll send you a link or something yeah it's amazing (laughs) the the birthday cake uh is so good because it's like pieces of birthday cake and uh, like truffles and stuff it's it's Mm -hmm. amazing it's it is the it's the splurge ice cream that my wife and i get each other for our birthdays or like special occasions or something like anytime that someone books like my highest package that i offer for weddings we order either a full birthday cake which 
they ship from New York uh, to our house and we'll, we'll have that little like eight inch birthday cake together, or we'll order some crack pie. I don't even remember what they rebranded <laughs> crack pie into. It's just, that's what we call it. Um, but, uh, but yeah, there was a whole episode of chef's table about uh, Christina Tosi and milk bar on Netflix. So if you are a, a chef's table fan, or if you love food and all of that, it's is one of our favorite episodes and that show is just oh. cinematically gorgeous so, so yeah exciting. there you go yeah go definitely uh dm me after you've had some milk bar ice cream oh you're gonna get a picture with this <laughs> one Life changing. it is so good so, okay jamie what are you loving this week uh okay how about i do like a business one and a personal one so let's good? do it yeah okay um all right so business is podcasts and voice to text notes like in the car um mm, mm-hmm. i have been podcasting i feel like i got away from it in the in the summertime but i have been listening to all of they're all business like none of them are you know crime or whatever i feel like everybody likes like has a guilty right. pleasure all of, like, the true crime. <laughs> and i'm like give me all the business stuff um but i seriously love it and i feel like it sets the tone for my days and so on the way back from taking all the kids to school I will listen to it on the way to sessions. I will listen to it. And then I do voice to text notes so that I have it like in my notes app um, so that I can be actionable later. But um, huge advocate for lifelong learning. And as a working parent, it's really hard to do. (laughs) Yeah. You got to have your designated time to be able to listen to podcasts and and grow and learn Uh, and and still be present for your kids because you can. I, there are times that I just like put in my little earbuds and I'm like, oh, wait, wait, sorry. What you've been asking me for something. <laughs> I was, I was deep in this podcast. I'm sorry. Uh, Jamie, what are, what's like one of uh, a podcast that you've just been like on repeat or that you look forward to every week or biweekly or however long it comes out that you're just like, oh, that one's out. I gotta, gotta listen to this one. Oh yeah. Um, I love the business made simple podcast. Um, and I think mm. I've been loving it more so the past year because uh, he has brought on um, other business owners and doing like almost like a case study. So they have worked with him and then they're showing, you know, where they were and now um, where they are because of what they implemented. Or he'll do like live um, kind of like live coaching. So they kind of brain dump where they're at, where they want to be. And then he gives them action items to do. And I just find it fascinating, especially because it is not all photographers. And I feel like the best ideas um, that I have gotten from my own business come from outside of, of our industry. Um, And seeing how, you know, something that's working over here could be changed in a way that it's really good for the people that I'm serving to. So I have found that part of it very like fascinating and intriguing. Oh yeah. No, I love looking at other industries and just other markets and even, uh, you know, Taylor Swift is huge right now. Uh, thanks. Thanks to Kelsey. Travis Kelsey. Yeah. Are you sure it's that way? <laughs> he, he, he really put her on the map. Uh, <laughs> even though he's huge oh. in football. But... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. Uh, yeah. Taylor's gigantic. Uh, but yeah, the, like the way that she rolled out this last uh, Midnight's album and doing all the like at midnight TikToks where she's like, you know, rolling the little like bingo ball things. And I was like, this kind of thing draws in community. And like, she has built such a community and I have taken so mm-hmm. many lessons from just watching what she's doing and uh, growing community to grow my own community and to like cultivate that and build connections where even people who haven't purchased anything with me are still within my realm of community. And we're like, we're friends online. Uh, And it's uh, yeah, there's, there's so many things that you can learn from other places. I love, um, or at least I used to listen to the um, how I built this podcast um, mm. which I think is still going. I'm not sure. Guy Rails does so many different things. Uh, but uh, I-, I loved that one because it was like the the origin stories of how did um, like Lululemon, how did that start? How mm. did, you know, those, those kind of like garage type small businesses that blew up and 
um, taking those little things from them of like, oh yeah, I could implement this kind of, you know, client experience or, you know, thinking of doing stuff a little bit outside the box. Cause whenever we learn from other photographers, a lot of times it's the same stuff that's just like kind of regurgitated over and over mm-hmm. again. It's like, oh, this is the kind of uh, welcome gift that I should send because 10 other photographers are sending their couples this welcome gift. So that's what I'm going to do. Uh, so oh, I love I'm that. so glad you said that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was like a pain point for me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mine, uh, I don't know if I should share it here. Oh, well, fine. Y'all can, anyone who wants to copy me, that's fine. But also think about if what would work for your own couples. Like I used to send like the candle and like the uh, little like his and hers type deals for welcome gifts. And then I was like, this is not me. This is not my brand. I am much more like movie night. So I send them a gift card for a Redbox movie that they can either stream on the app or go pick it up and send them some popcorn and some of my favorite like coffee. I have little like cocktail boxes that I'll send that all they have to do is just like pour in, uh, you know, whatever it is, vodka or whatever. And that makes a nice cocktail for two. And I was like, here is a date night in like, take your mind off of planning your wedding for a minute and just enjoy yourselves together. And I was like, that is much more me. And that speaks much more to what I want my couples to do rather than just like, here's some pretty stuff that you may like. I don't know what smells you like. Here's a candle that I don't really like, but someone said that I should send it to you. (laughs) And uh, yeah, I am huge advocate for like figuring out what, what works for your brand and what works for your couples, what works for your clients, and then send that to them um, to where like uh, they're not, it feels much more in line with, with your brand. Uh, so, okay, cool. Oh, me too. I, John, I, I have such a good quick go. example. Do you want to hear it? Yes, I would love to. It's, it's just a quick example of how you're saying, you know, that didn't feel like you. And so this felt more like you and connect more with your couples. But I had mm. a couple who was huge Baltimore Ravens fans. They got married at the stadium. Oh, this is how big a deal That's it was cool. to them. And I had previously photographed them um, at their home. And so I saw all of the, I mean, it was ravens everywhere. Mm -hmm. Um, And in conversation, she had mentioned how much that out of all of this stuff that they have, they do not have, um, like, I forget, I don't know what you might call them, but like stadium seats or like camping chairs, Mm -hmm. like the fold out. Oh yeah. Like the cushions that you put in the uncomfortable stadium seats. No, no, no. Like, uh, or like, like the you, fold you out fold like, them oh, like lawn chair. Oh yeah. Yeah. Kind of, yeah. 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 Like mm-hmm. fold them out. They have a cup holder and yes. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, you don't have those. Like you have like a flag on the front of your house. You have all of this stuff. <laughs> um, but their gift from me was a set of those. And it also came with like this little pop-up table and they, you would have thought I, you know, I gave them, I don't know the moon. Like it was because insane. you did. You did give them the moon. <laughs> them. You gave them their moon. And, and that's they, obviously yeah. not something I send, you know, to everyone, but I feel right. like there is such power in like listening, listening and truly serving in a manner that aligns with you and your mm. couples. Like, you know, if I would have sent them a candle, they'd be like, Hey, thanks. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, all right. Cool. cool. I'll, I'll light this whenever we have guests over, I guess. Um, but yeah, no, they are like, they're using that every single time that they go to a game and then they're, they're just like, Oh yeah, Jamie, she sent me this and yeah, they're, they're talking about you. So, okay. I love that. I love those like actual, like this happened and this is how, cause you don't think about that. That's not something that if you Pinterest, you know, guest, uh, whatever, uh, it's not going to come up with those, those seats. Um, but, um, Okay. Real quick, what am I loving? I am, oh, I am loving, I have to write them down because I have so many podcasts. I'm like, I'm loving fall baking um, because we are deep into like cookies and banana bread, muffins, and all of the, we haven't done any pies yet, but all of those things, we are just constantly, we are going through so much butter right now because we're baking (laughs) so much. Um, But yeah, no, I love that. Uh, but yeah, okay. 
This has been amazing. Thank you all so much for being on the show. Where can people find y'all? Where can they follow along uh, with all the things? Heather? <laughs> so you can connect with us on Instagram at the Conquer Community. And then on there um, in our bio, you can also connect with us through our Facebook group. Um, that is very connected with our clubhouse rooms that we do bi-weekly that we call Conquer Conversations. So if you would miss a clubhouse room, which we would absolutely love you to be there live with us because then you get to ask questions in real time and get answers from any educators that are in there with us, plus us too. Um, but if you miss one, then you can go to the Facebook group and that's where we drop any resources that we talk about on those clubhouse rooms so that you can still stay connected and get some information for things you could work on that week or different softwares that we are raving about um, and follow us on there. And then lastly, you can also grab our 52 free weeks of education and that comes to your email once a week. And so you can sign up there and just get little nuggets of something that you can implement right then that week to move your business forward amazing oh and then also if you want to come join us live conquer live <laughs> is january sorry i was like hello there's something else <laughs> um in january we are hosting conquer live it's our annual get together where we break down the barriers with educators we're all in one house and you're learning from all of them but then you're also getting time to just implement ask them questions sit down with them on the couch and just like open up your laptop and learn from them one-on-one -on -one. so um it's a a super fun experience, a really immersed um, experience for education, and you can get stuff done before you even leave that weekend. John left us. I know where to go. <laughs> I think we're John. Hi guys, we're the new host of. <laughs> I don't know. His screen went blank. Oh no. <laughs> oh, John's coming okay, back. Yeah. Yay. Yay. Okay, everyone, I'm back. Oh, here. And I have a microphone again. Um, that was fun. So I <laughs> forgot to plug in my computer um, during oh. the whole thing. And I was just like, I'd, I realized it as you were talking about Conquer Community and like Conquer Live and all of that. And I was like, oh, and then I plugged it in and it shut down. So, but we're back. <laughs> Y'all are professionals. This is how you do it. <laughs> You're just like... John left. He's a bathroom break or whatever. Get more coffee. We're just going to keep going. Keep the party rolling. Okay. <laughs> we are happy you're back though. <laughs> Good. Yeah, me too. Yeah. I'm happy to be back. Okay. Well, well, sweet. Well, thank you so much for being on the show. I will have links for all the places that you mentioned, uh, even the ones while I was gone. I will, uh, whenever I edit this later, I will... <laughs> I'll have links to all those. Uh, Heather, Jamie, this has been so much fun. I really enjoyed this. Even uh, not really the part where my computer died, but I, I did really enjoy all the conversation that we had. This was such a joy having you all here. Thank you so much. Thank you for having, having us. us. This, yeah, this has been wonderful. <laughs> <laughs>